I've measured the mat, so I know that it needs to be 16 by 20 on the inside. So what we'll need to do is we'll take this 2x4, which I have spare, and go ahead and make the frame out of a 2x4. So it'll need to be 16 by 20 to the inside of the notch. So really your board needs to be 16 by 20 plus however long the width of this is. Now I could use a router to notch out the part where the picture is going to sit, but I think I'm going to use a table saw for everything. I'll notch it with the table saw and also make a decorative ridge inside of it with the table saw as well. We're starting with an 8 foot 2 by 4 which is a little bit hard to manage in a table saw. It would be a lot easier if we went ahead and just cut it in half. So I'll make my first cut at 45 degree angle for the corner at about halfway across the board. Make sure that you've got your saw set at zero on the vertical and exactly 45 on the angle. Okay, so now that we have two boards that are cut about halfway the length of the eight foot, we have two boards that we can easily manage. Now, of course, we'll be cutting more 45s later, but in order for us to just make two pieces that we can easily control, this is all I've done so far. What we'll want to do next is we'll want to make make the notch that's going to set the picture and the mat inside of this frame. Probably about that deep in the face of it also with the table saw to dress it up. And that will also give us a separation between the two faces of the piece of board here so that we can we can stain or paint them easily a different color inside and out without having to mask them with tape. So now what we'll do is we want to get the saw set correctly. So we want to get the height of the blade probably just high enough just to cut it as deep as we need it with one pass so that we'll get the depth that we have to to set the mat and the, and the photo inside without it sticking out the back. That way when the picture frame is hung against the wall it sits flat on the wall. So we'll want to also move the rip fence in so that we get it just about where we need it. So that we can get about a half an inch maybe around where the picture is going to go. Normally we would want to use the table saw with a guard, of course, but in this particular instance the guard will not work because we're not cutting the board completely in half. We're only going to cut just a little bit into it, but you still have to be very careful with the table saw because the board can kick back on you. So you have to make sure you don't keep your face above the blade and so make sure that you don't keep your hands in a way where your hand can run into the saw blade. So we'll make sure that our fence we screw down tightly and clamp, it won't move. And we'll be about ready to make our first cut. So we've had the first dimension cut on both pieces. Now we want to cut the second dimension in this. So we want to make sure that we get the board set up more or less like it's going to be. And I can see that the rip fence needs to be moved this way in order to complete that cut. We want to just touch right inside of that other cut to complete that notch. I'll probably raise the saw blade slightly and we'll be ready to cut. Take your time. Make sure that you have the board pressed down against the table and against the rip fence and make sure you always know where the blade's coming through.
Now that we have both of these boards notched, the next thing I'd like to do is just go ahead and cut a groove in there in the front for the decoration. This will be the last thing we'll need to do with the table saw. So we'll go ahead and set the saw up so that it will cut perhaps that far across the board. So that's about where we're going to set it. And this won't need to be nearly as deep as the groove, so we'll just make the saw blade shallower. Just get enough of a depth so that it will have a dimension to it. This will make it appear that it's made out of two pieces, even though it's not. solid 2x4 didn't have much. So now that we have our groove cut to set the picture, the mat, and the backing in, and we have a decorative cut in the front of both of the boards, basically all the wood we're going to need for the project already cut. Now we just need to figure out where to cut the next angle. Now we want to make sure, since our mat is 16 by 20 that we give this thing enough room to set the mat inside of. So one dimension, we'll need to make sure that we measure it inside of the groove that we've set, of course. Ignoring the fact that this out here is going to be larger than that, we just need to make sure that we accommodate the 16 by 20 on the inside. And we don't want to make it too tight. So we'll just make it comfortable. Go ahead and cut it. Measure our 16 right here. So that will be our short angle. These cuts are critical, so you want to make sure that you have your saw set right and also that it's pressed down against the back and the bottom of this saw. Do not want to get your 45 cut wrong. So we have the short dimension of one piece cut. Now we'll just continue. You don't want to measure the other side. You want to mark it against the board that you just cut. What's critical here is that these two boards are exactly the same length. Okay, with all the pieces cut, this is what we'll end up with. Now we're about ready to glue it together. And we've got our notch that lines up very nicely in the corners. So now we're ready to assemble the frame. So we want to put our wood glue on sparingly. We don't want it to squish out the side too much or out the front. If we end up staining this, it'll mess up the penetration of the stain. So really the best thing to do is place the frame on its back so that if it does tend to squish out it will come out the back and not the front. Just go ahead and put it on all four corners.
frame will have a very rustic look when it's finished. And now we'll take advantage of the cut that we made in the front of the board. We'll go ahead and stain the outer rim of it. And this will make it appear that we've made this frame out of two pieces. Making it look basically like a more complex project than it really is. And here's the finished picture frame with the mat mounted in it. Now all we need to do is just insert the picture, and tape it in place, and then put a wire behind it to hang it. 